Welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to talk just a bit, just briefly, um, about a, a great apologetic for Christianity, the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. A and I'm going to show you why um, it is an apologetic. It's an irrefutable, an irrefutable apologetic, um, in my opinion. Um, now, why is that? Now, the reason is because Jesus himself predicted over and over the fall of Jerusalem. Some will say, okay, but the Gospels were written late. Let, let's just say for the sake of argument they were written late, but they weren't. Matthew, Mark, and Luke weren't. The synoptics, at least, weren't writ written late. Um, I don't think John was either. It wasn't written after eighty seventy. Because Jesus is predicting. They, they would be looking back and saying, hey, look at this irresistible proof. But scholars such as uh, the historic uh, E.P. Sanders and the historical figure of Jesus, who is not even a Christian, he's, he's liberal, a liberal scholar. Number one, the Jesus myth theory went out the window in the 50s. And he demonstrates a liberal scholar. Uh, I even think he's an atheist, I'm not sure. He's a liberal, liberal scholar respected liberal scholar. He, he pretty much got the new perspective of Paul off the ground in, in the late 70s um, with his work on Paul. Um, very respected scholar, E.P. Sanders. He says, we can know at least 14 things, major things of Jesus' life. Then we can know another 11 things that he, that he probably did. Of course, as Christians, I'm, I'm talking to skeptics here as well in this video, but as Christians, we believe everything uttered in the Gospels, um, Jesus said. But if it's uttered in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we, it, the point is it can be traced back no matter what, no matter when you think these were written, after the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. It is, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, if, if something is said in three of the Gospels, it most definitely came from Jesus' lips. Most definitely came from Jesus' lips. And... If it came from two of them, there's a great probability, Sanders says. But again, we, we as believers uh, believe everything in the Gospels came from Jesus' lips. Now, just off the cuff, I wrote a couple things down here. The parable of the vine growers, or the husbandmen, in Matthew 21, Mark 12, and Luke 20, Jesus tells the parable of the vine growers um, of the vineyard, which is Israel, Isaiah chapter 5. But Jesus is the true Israel, John 15. He's the true vine. Um, but here, um, he was to gather, they were, the fruits were to be gathered from Israel. But what did they do? When the prophets came, they killed the prophets of old. When Jesus came, the heir, they said, ah, let, 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 let's kill him. He's the heir. Then when the apostles and prophets were sent, they killed them as well. And Jesus said, what will the vine grower, the kingdom of, what did Jesus say after this? The kingdom of God will be taken away from you, that's national Israel, and given to a nation producing the fruits thereof. That's the nation of Exodus 19, that Israel is supposed to be, that holy nation. But we see in 1 Peter um, 2, 4 through 10, that Peter writing to the exiles of the diaspora, the, e, the ESV translation, which is more accurate, I believe, writing to Jews saying, you are a royal priesthood, um, a chosen generation. That's Exodus 19 and Deuteronomy 7, 6. So we see that parable there is, is emphatic. It's very clear. What, what will he do to them? Okay, he will take the kingdom away from them when he comes in AD 70, when he destroys them, and give it to another nation. That's the church as a whole. What will, and, and Jesus said in verse 40, Matthew 21, 40, what will the owner of the vineyard do when he, when he comes? This is the kingdom, and this is him coming. What will he do? What do the crowds answer? He will de utterly destroy those wicked, wicked men. They knew for sure that he was speaking of them. Um, now, the second one is the major prophecy um, in, in the, uh, the synoptics is the apocalypse of, of 
you could say, of Matthew, um, the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24 and 25. We have it in Matthew, we have it in Mark 13, we have it in Luke 21. And everyone agrees, all across the board for 2,000 years, that this is speaking of AD 70, even if they don't take the whole prophecy in that regard. They say at least some of it is referring to AD 70. Um, the only exception to that rule is the dispensationalists. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, many more, uh, well, here's another one. It's not found in Mark ex explicitly at all, but it's found in Matthew and Luke. And if it's in two, we know, we know for a fact that, that um, he uttered those words. In Matthew and, and Luke, um, we have Matthew chapter 23, 23 through 39. Then we have Luke 11, uh, 49 and following, where Jesus, re, where he chastises um, and calls them brood of vipers. That's Matthew chapter 3. Um, John the Baptist says, who, who has told you to flee from the wrath to come, a boat to come, you brood of vipers. In Matthew 23, he speaks to the leadership of Israel, of Judah, and says, you brought of vipers. And he tells them, uh, um, he, he recounts their bloody history of killing the prophets. He said, you killed the prophets, I'm going to send you wise men and scribes, Luke says apostles and prophets, you're going to persecute them also. And he says, your house is left to you desolate. That's the temple. All of these things will come upon this generation. Everyone agrees Matthew 23 is AD 70 when he said those words. Very explicit. Very, very explicit. We find that in Matthew and in Luke. And it, the, the early, the apostolic writers of the second century, um, Justin Martyr, uh, his uh, Dialogue with Trifo the Jew, him, he, he recognizes this as a great apologetic um, for Christianity. Way back then in the second century, uh, other writers, I guess Clement of Alexandria in the third, third century, um, said the same thing, and many other uh, of the fathers and apostolic writers um, used it as a, as a uh, proof of, of Christianity. Now, there's a book you can get. I'm going to post a link um, that you can read and, and another link that you can download the book. It's called The Destruction of Jerusalem, An Absolute and Irresistible Proof of the Divine Origin of Christianity by George Halford. Um, and I have that printed off. I printed off, that off years and years ago, probably 13 years ago when I first started studying. And um, it, it's a great work. It, it's just a very great work. He doesn't really make these arguments that I'm making um, uh, from the, the synoptics of saying, okay, we know for a fact that Jesus uttered these words, but he, it's a very, very good work, and I'll put the link in there for that. Um, but also in Matthew and Luke, we see some similarities. Matthew 8, 11, and 11 through 12, um, after Jesus... Um, uh, sees, says, there's this, I've not found such great faith in all of Israel, when speaking of the satyrian. And then he says, many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you yourselves, the sons of the kingdom, will be cast out. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Luke 13 says, you yourselves will be cast out. You yourselves. The sons of the kingdom is you yourselves of Luke 13. Um, of course, the sons of the kingdom is, is, is national Israel. So I think that should suffice. Um, just uh, wanted to touch on this. I was thinking of it earlier. Um, uh, yeah, a, a great apologetic for Christianity because even the liberal scholars, as I point out with E.P. Sanders and the historical figure of Jesus, and I couldn't find the page that I was looking for, but... He, he states emphatically, if it's in three, if it's in this, all three synoptics, we know it came from Jesus' lips. And of course, he believes, as a liberal scholar, the synoptics are written post-8070, which uh, I don't see how he can take that position. Um, but yeah, that, that should suffice, guys. Um, uh, a, a great apologetic, a great defense for the Christian faith. Um, it's not just the resurrection of Christ, but it's also... Him coming and destroying Jerusalem through the Roman armies, um, 
uh, just as uh, God uses Syria as a rod of his anger, Isaiah 10, uh, to, to, punish, um, to punish Samaria. And we see that also in Isaiah chapter uh, 12 and 14. And so that's, that's the way God would work sovereignly, bring in one nation or empire, the Romans, sovereignly against Jerusalem and judging them. Um, but that, that's about all, I guess, for this. Um, thanks for watching.